good morning again now let's see what happened after the snakes and the tortoises were asked to leave the village now comes the turn of the lizards lizards are also told in the same manner to leave the forest and what happened after all these other reptiles left the village except for the crocodiles what all did the crocodiles had to face what difficulties what problems they had to face now let's read it in the last part of the chapter the lizards were also ordered to leave and the whole forest now belonged to makara and his group the crocodiles faced unforeseen problems unforeseen means which they had not thought about which they didn't know about in the absence of their fellow reptiles so whatever problems they had not thought about whatever problems they had not visualized about they started facing those problems they soon realized that their happiness lay in their fellow creatures happiness and home coming a few weeks passed and the animals of the forest looked tired and fed up now after those snakes and tortoises had left so they were facing lot of problems there were rats all around there were there uh, the whole thing was rotting it was stinking the whole place was filled with stinking smell the rats now there were no snakes to eat them the rats had taken over the forest and they were having a wonderful time they were everywhere on the trees in the grass in the bushes on the ground since the snakes had left the place so rats were having a gala of a time there was nobody to eat them there was nobody to stop them so they were doing whatever they whatever they wanted they were troubling all the other reptiles now so they were everywhere they ate up the eggs of the lizards and crocodiles they would there would be no babies that year so they ate up all the eggs and there was a fear of not having any more babies of lizards even of crocodiles so makara's own nest of eggs had been chewed up even makara's own nest of eggs had been eaten up then makara had a great idea now he had one more idea some cunning idea he called a meeting of the crocodiles and said wouldn't it be wonderful if we the crocodiles could have the whole jungle for ourselves now he had a very dirty thought in his mind one more dirty thought cunning thought in his mind now he wanted the lizards also to go because he wanted the whole place for himself only for the crocodiles no one but us so he expresses this wish to his fellow crocodiles and tells him about his idea since other crocodiles were scared of him so they did not dare to oppose him these lizards now just look at them they have the strangest habits so every time he wants somebody some reptile to leave the forest he comes up with strange ideas strange justifications now about lizards he says that they have the strangest habits and some of them even change color how can we trust anyone who is green one minute red the next let's get rid of them so he comes up with strange ideas and justifications just to get rid of other reptiles same happened with lizards he uh, he told his fellow crocodiles that they have strange habits they keep on cha- changing their color and because of this habit we cannot trust them so we should get rid of them by now the crocodiles were really scared of makara now even his own fellow beings the crocodiles were scared of him because he kept on asking other reptiles to leave the forest and they would obey him so these crocodiles they thought of their own lives they thought maybe he would one day tell us also to leave the forest if we do not obey him so they were scared of him and they didn't dare to oppose him so they clapped and cheered just out of fear makara was pleased 
the lizards left the forest, some with their babies on their backs. But now, when life should have been wonderful for the crocodiles of Bambupati, all kinds of awful things began to happen. Now that they had thought that our life would be full of happiness, we would have the whole place to ourselves, we, we would have the whole food to eat and uh, everything to do uh, and every other thing to eat, all water to themselves. But it was not to be like that. They had to face a lot of troubles and problems. All kinds of awful things began to happen. To begin with, first there was a rotting smell. Now there were the rats and they were growing bolder by the day. They became so fearless that they jumped and turned somersaults on the crocodile's back. So they were not scared of them at all. They played on their backs doing those somersaults. They seemed to be growing larger. They seemed to be growing bigger because there was nobody to kill them. And there was no one to eat them but the crocodiles. These huge frogs, now the frogs had also become huge, began to eat the baby crocodiles. And the insects, now that the lizards were gone, there were millions of them growing bigger and nastier by the day. It was a terrible time for the crocodiles. They couldn't understand what had happened to their happy forest home. Then one day, a squeaky little voice piped up at one of their meetings. So a small squeaky voice of some baby expressed something in the meeting. And he was bold enough. He had the courage to say it. We know why the forest has gone crazy, don't we? Suddenly, everyone was silent. There was a small squeaky voice, probably of a young crocodile, of a baby. He who could speak up. And he asked everybody that we know the reason why our happy forest has gone crazy. And everybody knew, but they dare not say a word. They looked at each other expressing thoughts through their eyes but they could not say anything so they were silent even though they knew about the reason they looked at makara fearfully because they were scared of makara but to their surprise he looked nervous they were scared of makara they didn't dare speak up against him and when they looked at Makara, they could feel, yes, he's also nervous. He's also scared for his life now. He has also realized what a mistake, what a blunder he had done. So they were a little at ease when they saw the nervousness in Makara's eyes. He shook a rat off his tail. Even he was troubled by those rats and all. He shook a rat away from his tail, but and asked the small cro uh, crocodile, why little fellow? This time he didn't tell him to stop, no ifs, no buts. He didn't snub him that way, but he asked, he told him to speak up. It all began with the tortoise. This is the small baby saying it all, but he just stops short of saying tortoises that it was, it all began when the tortoises were asked to leave the forest okay okay said makara so he in he was makara became impatient and he didn't let him to finish he said okay okay i know about it now you don't have to say anything more there is no need to talk so much makara didn't want to admit he was wrong because he didn't want to confess to his wrongdoing but it didn't matter all the crocodiles knew now that he was not all that strong or powerful. When they saw the nervousness in him, when they saw the fear in his eyes, they understood that he is not powerful, powerful at all. He is just a cunning reptile. He is just a cunning crocodile who didn't want to live in peace with others. So now that it has, it has gone against him, he could realize that... He had not done anything good. Instead, he had just brought this misery upon himself. So all these crocodiles, they stopped fearing him. They stopped um, 
they just uh, could control the fear they had of makara and they could just speak up all the crocodiles knew now that he was not all that strong or powerful or always right what they thought of him they could understand that he was not always right he had made a blunder he had made a big mistake they sent urgent messages all over the place for the tortoises snakes and lizards to come back to pambu but the end they sent messages to all their fellow beings and what a great day it was when these creatures came back family after family with their little ones on their backs or struggling behind shouting at their parents to wait for them so everything began to look good again in two months the forest was back to normal the rats disappeared and the insects and the smell and the world finally went back to its familiar old self so everything returned back the happiness the good of the place the well-being their welfare all returned back well prem said the old man have you fallen asleep did my story send you off to dreamland so this is how the story ends because everything went back to normal in that village and in that forest everything was normal again and this is how the story ends and then suddenly that old man asked prem whether he had gone off to sleep or was his story so boring that it sent him off to sleep to a dreamland i shook my head no grandfather i was just thinking maybe it's time he had not fallen off to sleep he was just thinking about it all this story had a great impact on his mind so he told the old man that maybe it's time i i went back to my village because i have a story to tell them but what if they don't listen to me we can only keep at it my son tell these stories again and again so he was a little apprehensive whether the people of his village would listen to him whether they would understand what the story is trying to tell them so grandfather tells him that you do not lose hope you go and tell the story and if they do not listen just repeat the story again and again till it goes till it put some sense in their mind so you do not stop at your good work just keep on relating these stories one day it they would all realize their mistakes and one day they would truly understand the story we can only keep at it my son tell these stories again and again to more and more people some of them may laugh at you or say your stories are not true but they may but they may remember them one day and understand that each of us has a place in the strange funny world of ours so we have to live peacefully with others why make our lives miserable if we are not giving peace to others we will not get peace ourselves we would always be at trouble we would always be punishing ourselves because we would always be thinking about troubling others so where would we get that peace of mind maybe it would give us some peace of mind but for only a small time of mind sorry a small um, period of time it can keep our mind occupied this kind of, when we are not letting others live so it will keep our mind uh, occupied we'll be thinking of making trouble for others we will not be able to live in peace we will not be able to do other kind of work because we would be thinking we would be having these evil thoughts and whatever we do it reflects on us it always reflects on us so if we create trouble for others somebody else can create trouble for us so whatever we are doing we are given this one life make it happy make it peaceful live peacefully with others why put others in trouble because some day we will be in their place and it is not that if we are creating trouble for others that we will not get affected no it is us also we who can get it is we also who can get affected see the riots if a house is burned definitely it can harm the neighbor also it can affect the neighbor also so it is not only the other person who is getting affected it is we also who can get affected so why 
spoil our peace of mind why not live happily why not have peace of mind why not live peacefully with others because it is not that only the other person is getting affected it is our lives which are getting getting affected also so live in peace we are giving uh, given this one life make it peaceful happy and healthy live it fully and make it a happy place for others also that is how you would be remembered you would maybe you'll your name will also be there in the book see this was the person who made life lives beautiful for others now there are some question answers of the chapter in what way is Bambupati different from any other village it is different because all sorts of people coming from different castes, creeds, religion, live happily together. Why is Prem determined not to return to his village? He is determined because he has been affected so much. He has suffered so much. He has seen the hatred in other people's eyes. He, his house was burned. So he thinks that those people cannot live peacefully with others. So it is useless. It is futile for him to return back to his village because he has seen the hatred and the hand he has gone through the riots there why did makara dislike tortoises snakes and lizards write a line about each he just gave a strange explanation about tortoises that they are slow coaches they carry their houses on their back snakes make a funny sound weird sound and they are slimy creatures whereas lizards can't be trusted because they ch keep on changing their color so he was this he had those cunning thoughts he has those sly thoughts in his mind so he gave weird justification just to send them away from the forest what went wrong when the tortoises snakes and lizards left the forest when the tortoises left everything was rotting there the the fallen fruit the dead animals so it was stinking all over the place when snakes left the forest, there were rats. They had gone bolder and bolder and there because there was no one to eat them. And lizards, the insects had become so huge and they were troubling people there. Why do you think Prem wants to tell the story of the reptiles to the people of his village? So that he wants them to understand the importance of living together in harmony. How every class of the society how every religion of the society is dependent on others do you agree that it is difficult not to go along with someone who is very strong and powerful express your views frankly and clearly no it is not difficult maybe some of you would find maybe some of us do have this kind of fear in our minds but it is not difficult we can always make other other people understand it is like they are they can't be always right someone who is powerful someone who is strong might cannot be always right they can be wrong nobody is perfect it is not that whatever they say we have to follow it no we have given god has given us a mind of our own we can think we know what is good and what is bad so similarly just because somebody is taller than us stronger than us or powerful than us doesn't make him a perfect person so it is not that we can have blind faith on that person we they can also go wrong if you were a baby crocodile would you tell makara that he was wrong what would you say to convince him yes this is for you to do would you make him understand where he had gone wrong of course we can always do that we can we cannot stay silent we cannot be mute spectators to all the miseries being brought upon the people. We can't just look at them. We can, if we can't fight them, but at least we can express our views where the people have gone wrong. Because this is why we have to know the difference between the good and the bad. We cannot be silent spectators. Like I said, it can affect all us also sometimes if somebody is doing wrong with others he can do wrong with us also so we cannot be tolerating we cannot be bearing it all and wait for the trouble 
to come to us so we can always speak up our mind so this was the discussion of these question answers in brief i'll be sending you proper answers of this this was just to make you understand what how and how we can answer these questions because this is what we read in the story so that was all about the chapter hope you have understood it and hope you have learned a good lesson out of this chapter because hatred takes us nowhere if it affects others it can affect us also so you we have to think about our own welfare we have to think about our own peace of mind so we cannot always say that no i am at a safer place i am at a safe distance it cannot be like that so do good and good will come to us that is how the chapter should end whatever good you do to others will definitely come back to you so keep this hatred away keep this whatever nonsense we are thinking about others keep it out of your mind we should live peacefully we should make this world a beautiful place to live in thank you children hope you have understood and hope you got the message from this chapter